Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the hardware and software tour of the Sprint HTC Touch Pro, uh, the first Touch Pro that has been released in the United States. There are going to be two more Touch Pros coming up on AT&T and on Verizon. So let's talk about the hardware of this particular device and look, look at it in comparison to the original. Um, they're very similar. Like I said in the uh, unboxing, they're about the same width, although if you look really closely, I'm going to try to do this right, um, it turns out that the that the European uh, Touch Pro on the right is actually about one millimeter thicker than the US Sprint Touch Pro. So that's good news. Um, we have a lot of chrome on the Touch Pro and it's funny if you think about the Titan II when it came over from Europe to, the, to AT&T as the tilt it just had a lot of chrome on it. Apparently, uh, Americans like chrome, and, I, and I, I can see why. I mean, chrome is flashy, chrome looks good, chrome looks high-end. So we have this chrome stretching all around the device, and, and because of that, it lo just looks really great. Um, if we look at the European version, it's completely black. Okay, so looking at the front of the device, we have a light sensor here with a speaker, plus a few different buttons down here, only one of which is programmable. We have a home button, an OK or back button here, call end and call start. Um, and also, if you run your finger around the outside of this edge, it will zoom in and zoom out of uh, web pages and that sort of thing. Over onto the side, we have a volume rocker, and there it says HTC Innovation again. Going over to the top, we have the standby button. Over on this side, we have the stylus, and like the, uh, the original Touch Pro, if you take out the stylus, it'll turn the phone off from, or put it back on from standby, I should say. And if we look at the bottom, we have the EXT USB port that's proprietary to HTC, although it works with mini USB ports if you have those. We have a soft reset hole and a microphone, and fortunately, HTC and Sprint have included this adapter which will allow you to plug it into the bottom and use the, uh, the pass-throughs for 3.5 millimeter, 2.5 millimeter, and you can even keep charging or syncing your device while you listen to audio. It's a little annoying having this hanging off of your device, but, but if you want a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack built in, you're going to have to look to other devices. If we turn over to the back, we have something that really differentiates uh, this device from the original Touch Pro. We have a rubbery kind of um, silver metallic backing which really makes the device feel good in hand compared to the faceted backing on the European version which makes it feel kind of boxy so that's a really great thing about that if we take off the cover um, we see the 3.2 megapixel camera sensor and the LED flash and we also see the micro SD slot over here um, behind the battery cover unfortunately the battery is 1340 milliamp hours just like the original and that provides a pretty good amount of battery life okay let's take a look at the software on the Sprint HTC Touch Pro the first thing I want to compare is TouchFlow 3D on both versions um, on the European version if you slide your finger you get the uh, you know the icons show up on the screen like so and if we do likewise on the sprint version we get kind of fluorescent looking icons which is kind of cool actually and also the icons along the bottom are slightly different um, so if we go over to weather and over here to weather it just looks a little bit different uh, sprint kind of dressed it up to to match their own colors and you'll see throughout the operating system on the sprint HTC touch pro that a lot of yellow is used because sprints colors are black and yellow Okay, so let's take a closer look at TouchFlow 3D on the Sprint HTC Touch Pro. On the first tab we have, uh, just as the regular version, we have the time plus any voicemail notifications and we can also get into call history. If we flick our finger up, we can see some more appointments that are coming up. Uh, if we go over to favorite people, we can add their pictures and flick through them, kind of like um, album art, and, and call them just by tapping on their picture. If we go over to mail, if we have mail, mail, a mail account set up, you can flick through your messages kind of in this 3D-like fashion that looks really great. Um, if we go over to messages, it will show you your text messages, and again, you can flick through these. Um, it'll show you how many messages you have on the right side, and you can just flick your finger to get through to those. If we go to internet, pressing on launch browser will launch Opera Mobile 9.5. 
if we go to Sprint Music, um, again, you can flick your finger to go to previous CDs, and the device will automatically search your phone for um, music you may have installed on a storage card. Now, this is a little different. There's a button and a link to Sprint Music Store, and what it'll do is take you to Opera Mobile to a not-so-well mobile-optimized uh, Sprint Music Store layout. And from there, you can buy tracks for 99 cents. They'll be downloaded to your device and that sort of thing. And if we go into pictures, we can do that really nice flick where we just flick through our, all of our pictures. If we like what we see, you can tap on it. Um, it will bring it up full screen. And it has the accelerometer, of course, so you can flip it to uh, the other way and it will follow. And then if you want to zoom in, you do a little circle and that sort of thing. So let's get out of that. Okay, if we go to the next one, Sprint TV, this is a little bit different, and I'm going to show you this. Um, I'm going to launch Sprint TV by just pressing on the center there. And this is a subscription service. Prices start $15 for basic channels. Um, you, can get, you can get sports channels and, and, and a lot of different kind of entertainment packages with Sprint TV. And basically, it's a rebranded version of Moby TV. Um, it probably looks familiar to you by now. And what you do is you can go down the line. Some of these are live channels, while some of them are kind of on-demand type programming. So if we go to CNN, that will actually be one of the live channels. And what's kind of weird is you actually have to double tap to, to select. One time to select, two times to actually get it to go. And I'm going to go to CNN Mobile Live so you can get an idea of, of how it looks when you're streaming TV. Um, right now I'm over EVDO with a kind of a weak signal, but it should work pretty well still. Let's take a look. Okay, here it is, and if you rotate the device, we can get a full screen view. Let me shake a little bit so that it registers a screen rotation, and it goes full screen. The quality is pretty good. You know, it could be better over EVDO, and to show off the VGA screen of the, uh, of the Touch Pro would really be great. It's not very high resolution, but it looks pretty good, and it sounds pretty good if you're on the road and you want to get some entertainment. Um, it's, a, it's a good program if you're willing to pay for it. Okay, so here we're back in TouchFlow 3D. I'm going to go over to the next one, which is weather. And again, in TouchFlow 3D, you can swap your finger to the right or to the left to move, or you can just click on an icon on the bottom. So here we are in weather. And of course, you can have multiple cities here. You can flick your finger up to change the city, uh, just like you're used to in TouchFlow 3D. Over in settings, we don't really have anything unusual here. It's the same settings as found on the European version. Finally, if we end up over in programs, um, you know, we can add our own list of programs, and that is very flick friendly. In fact, the entire operating system is flick friendly. So if we go into the programs, and I'm going to show you the unique entries in the programs, I can flick my finger or just kind of move it slowly, like so. Okay, so here we are in programs. Let's take a look at what we have. We have a full version of Office Mobile 2007. We have Adobe Reader for PDFs, a camera application. Um, let's see what else. We have Clearview Presentation Suite, Communication Manager. Let me just show you what that looks like. It's, it's a little bit different than it is on the, um, the original Touch Pro. Let me just show you the Communication Manager here. A little bit different. Again, the yellow and black theme is prevalent here. Um, going down the list, we have Live Search already installed. We have Instant Messenger, which is actually the OZ Messenger client, which is really good. It lets you get on Live and Yahoo and AIM. Uh, going down the list, we have MP3 Trimmer. We've seen that before. It lets you make ringtones from songs that you have on your device. Pocket Express, it's a, it's a free program that you can get for any device, but uh, it's actually pretty nice. It allows you to get a lot of information for free. Um, so we have breaking news and opinions. We can go to stocks, maps, entertainment, look up movie times. We could do weather and get a, uh, a forecast for the area, like so. So pretty good, pretty good addition. Going down the list, we have Sprint Software Store, which is actually just an um, internet-based store. It's nothing like a, an application store application that allows you to easily download applications right to your device. It's not that great. Um, we have Sprint Navigation, Sprint Music, all this proprietary Sprint stuff if you want to spend more money. Okay, going down the list, we have the YouTube application uh, that we are seeing on all the HTC Touch devices, and it's really fantastic. It's a great way to look at YouTube videos while you're on the go. Okay, so let's take a look at settings now. 
Okay, here in settings, we have a full version of Microsoft Voice Command built in, which is really great. Voice Command is one of the best um, voice recognition programs out there. Let's see what buttons we can customize. I think I mentioned this earlier, that you can only customize the uh, a hold action of the call start button. And right now it's set to launch Voice Command, so if I get out of here and I, you know, hold, vo hold the button, what time is it? So there you go. Um, if we go over to system, we can take a look at some of these things. We have the G-Sensor um, calibration wizard, which, which we know is on other HTC devices. Let's take a look at how much memory we have. Now, the specifications of this version of the Touch Pro are almost identical to that of the European version. Let me just show you for, for comparative purposes. Um, the, eight, the Sprint version actually has a little bit more program memory, which is kind of interesting. We have 203 over here and 200 megabytes on the European version. Um, and we also have a little bit more of storage space, but only about 6 megabytes or so. Other than that, they both share the same processor, so they're pretty much the same inside, except for, of course, Sprint version is running on CDMA and, and the European version is on uh, GSM. Um, let's go down the list. This is interesting. We can turn threaded text messaging off. I don't know why you would want to do that, but there are some people that are kind of bothered by Windows Mobile 6.1's threaded text messaging. So you can turn it off here. And going down the list, we have the video out setting here, but we can't access it until we actually plug in a video out cable, which you have to buy separately. It's one of the good things about the Touch Pro is that you can do video out, but they don't include the cabling for that, unfortunately. Um, and that's pretty much it for, for system settings. And over in, in Connect, Connections, nothing's really unusual here. So overall, I think Sprint did a really good job at bringing the Touch Pro to their network. Um, they didn't cripple it with a bunch of software. The specifications are similar. It's still a fast and powerful device that I think a lot of business users will really appreciate. And by the way, there's still no TouchFlow 3D in landscape. You just get a bunch of icons, but um, we kind of expected that. So if you're on the Sprint network and you're looking for a really powerful Windows mobile phone, then the Sprint Touch Pro is really a great way to go. If you want the keyboard, of course you have the option of the Sprint Touch Diamond, which is the same exact thing, just lacks a keyboard, and of course that makes it um, thinner as well. So that is it on the Sprint HTC Touch Pro.